stupendous event. I can't believe you're all standing out there in the freezing cold. <laughs> it's cold back there too. I'm reading from The Blind Assassin uh, in a chapter in which a young pulp magazine fiction writer of the 1930s is beginning to seduce a young lady uh, during a picnic in a park. His method of seduction is storytelling, and this is why you should all read a lot. <laughs> if you are a male person, you will know a lot of stories to tell, and if you're a female person, you'll know when you've heard them before. <laughs> What will it be then, he says, dinner jackets and romance or shipwrecks on a barren coast? You can have your pick, jungles, tropical islands, mountains, or another dimension of space. That's what I'm good at. Another dimension of space, oh really? Don't scoff, it's a useful address. Anything you like can happen there. Spaceships and skin tight uniforms, ray guns, Martians with the bodies of giant squids, that sort of thing. You choose, she says, you're the professional. How about a desert? I've always wanted to visit one, with an oasis, of course. Some date palms might be nice. She's tearing the crust off her sandwich. She doesn't like the crusts. Not much scope with deserts. Not many features, unless you add some tombs. Then you could have a pack of nude women who have been dead for 3,000 years with lithe, curvaceous figures, ruby red lips, azure hair and a foam of tumbled curls and eyes like snake-filled pits. But I don't think I could fob those off on you. Lurid isn't your style. You never know. I might like them, she says. I doubt it. They're for the huddled masses. Popular on the covers, though. They'll writhe all over a fellow. They have to be beaten off with rifle butts. Could I have another dimension of space and also the tombs and the dead women, please? She says. That's a tall order, but I'll see what I can do. I could throw in some sacrificial virgins as well with metal breastplates and silver ankle chains and diaphanous vestments and a pack of ravening wolves extra. I can see you'll stop at nothing, she says. You want the dinner jackets instead, cruise ships, white linen, wrist kissing, and hypocritical slop? No, um, all right, do what you think is best. Cigarette? She shakes her head for no. He lights his own, striking the match on his thumbnail. You'll set fire to yourself, she says. I never have yet. Space it is then, he says, with tombs and virgins and wolves, but on the installment plan, agreed? The installment plan? You know, like furniture, he says. She laughs. No, I'm serious. You can't skimp. It might take days. We'll have to meet again. <laughs> she hesitates. All right, she says, if I can if I can arrange it. Good, he says. Now I have to think. He keeps his voice casual. Too much urgency might put her off.